is going on everyone? So in this week's video, we are going to take a first look at the new Intrepid 8x10 second generation camera. Now, as a matter of full disclosure, I did not buy this camera, but it was provided to me in exchange for some video work that I did for Intrepid's uh, Kickstarter campaign for their enlarger. I have not taken this camera into the field yet, but I'm hoping to do that next week. Hoping to head back to Death Valley and see what I can find there. Um, but I did take their first generation 8x10 on a backpacking trip last year and was able to get some pretty cool portfolio shots from that camera. Uh, the second generation is a more refined version of the first gen. And in this video, we're gonna talk about the differences because there are a lot of them. So let's go ahead and take a look at the second generation Intrepid 8x10. So let's start by taking a look at the front standard and the changes that have been made. So the previous generation had single knob on either side here. That single knob controlled both the rise and the fall as well as the tilt. And those knobs were not captive. So you have to be careful not to lose that knob and they had a tendency to kind of back out pretty early. Um, but here we have a whole different setup. We have dual knobs. So if I loosen the outside knobs, we now have the ability to adjust the tilt and then we can lock it in place there, just like that. I can square it up just like this. And then the inner knobs, these are gonna be used for adjusting the rise and fall. So if I loosen those, I can adjust the rise and fall just like that. I would recommend adjusting your rise and fall first and then adjusting your tilt, just because the rise and fall, you have a little bit of play there when that control is loose. So adjust the rise and fall, then adjust the tilt, everything's gonna be absolutely rock solid. Uh, the front standard here is beefier than on the first generation. So on the first generation camera, I found that I had to take some gaffer's tape and kind of wrap it around this lower post here of the front standard. And for whatever reason, that made it a lot more stable. Uh, this one doesn't need that. So if this is all locked down nice and tight here, you'll see that that front standard is really rigid. So they have this kind of reinforced. So you have these metal posts that drop down here. You have a U-shaped piece of metal right here. And then you have the piece of wood here, so it's all kind of locked in together. And then as you're tightening down this knob here, which is now captive, by the way, the previous generation wasn't captive. But as you lock this down, it kind of tensions everything really nicely. And then these little cutaways right here on the sides that show you where this sh should be positioned. The only thing that's missing is some marks here on the, uh, the top of this uh, focusing bed here to make sure that you are squared up 90 degrees. And I think that's something I'm going to add to my camera just by putting a square there and drawing some lines there. It should be pretty easy. So I'm really happy with the way that the front standard has been changed. Um, so that's pretty nice. If we look at the side of the camera here, uh, the bellows, it's a different material than the first generation. It feels like more of a kind of a rubberized material. And I have a feeling that this will handle much better when exposed to the elements rain, snow, stuff along those lines. I know that my first generation 8x10, the bell has got a little bit kind of a wrinkly or so with time, so uh, this does seem like it's a better material. And also the way that the bellows are attached to the top of the camera. Um, it's nice and clean up here. On the previous one, they kind of pull them tight there on the top, so it uh, looks like the bellows are done a little bit nicer, which is quite nice. Uh, if we kind of go around towards the rear standard, uh, we retain uh, the rear movements. Um, so we have our rear tilt, very similar to the first generation in the way that that was done. Um, we have an all aluminum uh, base here for the camera, which makes the camera a little slimmer for you know, this portion of the camera and also adds some strength, which is really nice. Um, and there's some other big changes here on the rear of the camera as well. So if we flip this around here, You'll see that we no longer have the, uh, the elastic cord to uh, hold the uh, ground glass part on there. Uh, we have a traditional kind of a spring back setup. And I never had any issues with the uh, bungee cord setup for the, for the back of the camera, but I will say that this is an even stronger setup, which is really nice. Uh, another really big change is that the camera can be stored either horizontal or vertical. And also there is a change in the way that we uh, change orientation of the back of the camera. So there are these 3D printed clips right here that open up and we have magnets in here similar to the first generation but now they're kind of oriented a little bit differently. 
So if you kind of break the connection of those magnets, kind of lift up like that. And if I want to go vertical, I can just drop this in place like so, and it clicks in place there with the magnets, and then secured with the clips over the top. Unlike the previous generation where the magnets were actually kind of on the inside, uh, on the second generation, the magnets are now actually stored in uh, these holes back here. So they actually work uh, right up against the magnets on the other side, but there's wood in between them. So it's actually really, really solid. And the magnets aren't gonna work themselves free of where they're being held captive. So really happy to see the ability to store the camera horizontal or vertical and also the fact that those magnets aren't kind of getting get lost there. Uh, also in the back of the camera, you see our focusing knob right here. So this is a difference from the uh, first generation where we had knobs up front. So we have a far more precise focusing mechanism right here. And so you turn the knob here to focus it out, focus it in. It's gonna be a little slower to focus in the first generation, but it is a lot more precise and it's a lot stronger. So as you focus it, there are these metal rails underneath here, and then uh, there's some guides under there as well. So it's a very, very smooth setup. Uh, the, only, the only thing is if you have a really long lens, you're gonna be turning that knob quite a bit to kind of extend it out. Um, but it's really not a big deal because now you know that you're gonna have a lot stronger setup. And uh, just to show you how strong it is, you can't push it back in because of the, just the way the gearing is there and everything. So. I'm really happy with the way that the focusing has been redesigned. I took this camera as well as the first generation and I put them on a scale. And I did find that the second generation is a little bit heavier than the first generation, but they're both very, very light when it comes to an eight x 10 camera. Uh, this is actually the first one that they made. And I'm told that this is production for everything other than just the way that the um, Basically for this one, instead of being anodized, it was painted for the base, but all the production ones will be anodized for the base. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I'm really looking forward to taking this out in the field and hoping to get away to Death Valley in yeah, next week or so and uh, go out there, get some experience with it in the field because I will be taking this camera on my spring backpacking trip to Southern Utah and uh, looking forward to getting out there and seeing what I could find. But I wanna thank everyone for watching and we'll see you around next week.